if you're an accountant in one of these organizations, you know, you want to receive data in a specific way. You want to be able to take that inventory data and turn it into something that can be consumed within your ERP or your accounting system and then be able to track it over time. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun, and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 179. In what ways is the drone industry maturing? For that question, we turn to Paul Ross of Kespri where he leads marketing and is responsible for the company's market development and demand strategy. Paul has nearly two decades of experience in growing businesses through marketing and partnerships. He has helped scale the performance of organizations big and small, including Business Objects, Microsoft, AlterX, and BugCrowd. In this edition of the Drone Radio Show, Paul talks about Kespri's growth. Paul talks about Kespri's growth. In this edition of the Drone Radio Show, Paul talks about Kespri's growth, some successful drone business models, and how the industry seems to be maturing. But before we hear from Paul, I want to thank those of you for supporting my funding. Before we hear from Paul, thank you all for supporting my funding campaign. Now you have the option of making a one-time donation in any amount by going to droneradioshow.com slash donate. Whether it's a dollar, $100, or much more, you can help defray the cost of production and keep the podcast going and growing. And if you want to make a monthly donation, and if you want to make a monthly contribution, you can still go to patreon.com slash drone radio show. So let's talk about the drone industry with Paul Ross of Kespri. Let's pick up the interview where I asked Paul to introduce himself. Hey, Randy. Yeah. My name is Paul Ross. I'm the marketing leader here at Kespri. We are an industrial drone vendor. We're really focused in on helping the aggregates, mining, inspection, roofing, insurance markets, as well as construction to keep their operations more profitable and keep their operators safer through the use of our drone and our cloud technology. Does Kespri deliver the services directly or does it provide the training and equipment so companies can perform the missions themselves? Yeah, that's a really good question because I, I think what in the industrial drone marketplace is really kind of splitting into two groups, those who kind of support outsourced third-party pilots and enabling them to have a, have a business. And then there's people like Kespri where we're focused on enabling the people in-house at these organizations, whether it's a mining organization or an adjuster within an insurance company. We provide the complete solution. So we provide the drone hardware, we provide them with the training, the support and everything they need to get up and running. And then we provide them with the cloud environment in which to analyze the data that's captured through the drone, whether that's, you know, measuring inventory for a mine or inspection on a roof for an ingester. So we're very much focused on enabling the in-house data capture, if you like, through our drone capabilities. And in many cases, the person most apt to run a drone program would probably be the person or department that's most familiar with the actual asset that's being surveyed. Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it because within a mining environment, for example, it may well be a site manager or a site engineer or mining engineer who's going to do that. So the person that's actually responsible for the inventory asset locally at that site, so that might be the case. But what we're seeing increasingly as well is people who are responsible for the business side of that asset, if you like. So seeing more and more people who are responsible for the accounting side of inventory. You have to remember that the the things that are being measured or assessed, as you put it, are are assets for that organization. So more and more people on the business side are actually both using our drone to capture data, but then analyzing it and using that in a variety of different ways to kind of make business decisions. I interviewed Kespri CEO George Matthew about eight months ago. What's happened since that interview? For us, we've been really focusing in on expanding the value that we're providing to those different industries. Kind of it's what we've seen overall in the industry is just a maturing of how people are using drones and new use cases coming up. So where we've been focusing in on is on our inspection capabilities. So the ability for us to inspect roofs, 
the first thing we've really been focusing on is, is really making that workflow for people who are doing roof inspections for residential homes uh, where there's damage. You know, we just we're just coming out of the kind of hail storm season. A lot of focus has been put there through enabling what we call like things like our virtual test square, making sure that the workflow that a typical insurance adjuster has to go through is actually embedded in the workflow within Kespri. So we're not forcing them to do something outside of how they would they would typically do it but making it so that they don't have to climb on the roof to actually do that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is as I mentioned, is expanding the use cases and expanding from the industry. So what we've taken is our, our deep experience in doing residential inspections and now added in a focus in on the commercial inspection world, so commercial property inspection. So think about being able to do a inspection of a 2,000 square foot roof over a, a major retail store in a matter of minutes instead of having to you know take a day or plus to, to do that and something that happens very infrequently so we, we've added in a commercial inspection capability specifically actually focused on radiometric thermal capabilities so the ability to get you know pixel level understandings of the temperature values on a roof which has really had big impact on being able to understand if there's underlying damage etc in, in that roof that can't be seen from the visible and the visible spectrum so that's that's one big area We've also introduced a lot of new capabilities for our mining and aggregates customers. But one area that we've seen a really interesting new use case with a number of customers coming on board is actually in the pulp and paper industry. And this might be a topic or a customer we come back to later, but we're seeing new types of users emerge in that industry because you think about it, it's very similar to doing an inventory within a mine or a quarry. You know, you have a lot of wood chips or wood pulp available and you have to have that as stock to enable you to meet your sales requirements to produce paper. And so their stockyard, they're starting to use Kespri to manage that inventory and and do it in a way that's going to be safe for all of the employees there. So those are big new things. Lots of new customers coming on board. Uh, Maybe we can touch on a a few of those. But really, it's been that maturation and, and new areas of use for our draw that we've seen over that period since you talked to George last. Is business starting to come to Kespri, or does the company have to aggressively look for new business? If that makes sense as a question. <laughs> it, it does. It totally is. Like, so, so the underlying elements of that is, is, is this a healthy industry with you know, awareness levels going up? Direct answer to your question is both. You know, we've really ramped up our efforts to make sure that people are aware of us. It's one of the reasons I'm with the organization now. I joined about a year ago. We've really focused in on how do we help, you know, large enterprise customers to get the value from using aerial intelligence. But what's happened in industries over the past year really has enabled more customers to be coming to us directly. So I think last year's experience with the hurricanes in in Texas and, and Florida really kind of brought the idea of using drones for insurance purposes in the residential space to the forefront. And that's led to a lot of inbound interest in what we do there. And then on the aggregate side, we've really reached the stage where we're pretty much the de facto provider for major aggregates and mining accounts. And so we're seeing kind of that halo effect of people being aware of us coming in and and getting an understanding of of what we're interesting. So you you always have to work hard for customers' business, and that's the way it should be. Uh, But we've definitely seen a big increase over the last year of the types of enterprises coming in and both new engagements with us, but also expansion within those existing accounts. Help us understand the type of business models that are defining the industry today. There is definitely a kind of a shift in the market where we're seeing a, a separation of how the providers are actually you know, running their businesses. I think early on, a lot of people were, were trying to find where they could actually be a scalable business. And some people haven't been able to do that. You know, like the recent user out there where is, is very sad for both of their customers and for, for their employees. But I think what we're seeing is a separation of the organizations that are focusing in on enabling pilot networks. That would be folks like Precision Hawk, Drone Deploy, those types of vendors, where you're looking at, you know, an incredibly valuable set of pilots that need to have a platform in which both to to get and get business, but also to process the data that they're capturing. So I think that's one area. And then there's the second area, which is more along the lines of what Kespri does, which is providing kind of vertical specific complete solutions. And I think that separation is really quite marked in the marketplace. And I think where some of the organizations are struggling is that they kind of fall between the two of them. But where we're seeing success is to go deep on the vertical side, provide real value, a complete solution, 
but I do think that there's a strong business. We saw this at Interdrome when we were we were talking there that the kind of pilot network wars of who's going to own that group is, is, is the second one that uh, we see in terms of a business model. And it seems like the market is large enough to accommodate the two models. There isn't a right or wrong way to deliver the service. I would definitely agree. And I, I think it's also a reflection a little bit of the client's kind of model. If you take the insurance business, you have people there who have all of their adjusters who are in-house, their employees, they work for those big companies. You know, when there's a, a claim, they're tasked to go out and do that. But then there's others who have a model where they will actually use independent adjusters. Even within the big insurers, there's some of the, that take that model. And that's a kind of a reflection of how, you know, roof inspection is working, where companies like Kespri are servicing the, the former approach of in-house. And then the pilot network model is much more suited to those who are, are not going to rely upon internal resources to go and inspect a roof during a claims process. So I think it's a little bit driven by how the client side of things is going as much as it is a kind of a business model for the company involved. What might we see from Kespri in the coming months? A big thing for us is really continuing to double down on our focus on on our customers. You know, Kespri now has well over 300 customers, about, you know, 200 of those are going to be in the mining and aggregate space. So what for us we're going to focus in on is is how do we, A, tell their stories because we want to make sure that the value that those customers are, are getting is kind of in the marketplace. And you've seen us do that with Folks like E-Construction, Big River Steel, Wendling Quarries, and Mercer Seldar recently. But also, like, how do we help them more specifically in terms of their operations? So how do we ensure that um, if you're doing inventory measurement, which is a you know, very typical use case for drones within the mining environment, how do we actually make that more into an inventory management solution? And you know, we've been talking a little bit about that with our, our clients over the last couple of months. And now there's a real opportunity for like, how do we make that process as simple as possible? So if you're an accountant in one of these organizations, you know, you want to receive data in a specific way. You want to be able to take that inventory data and turn it into something that can be consumed within your ERP or your accounting system and then be able to track it over time. So that's going to be a big focus on us on that side. You mentioned that Kespri has more than 300 clients now. What's it been like scaling up to serve that many customers? That's a really big question, Roddy. A really good question. I like it. There's a variety of elements to go in there. Like, so we've been really lucky to tap into a model where we can scale the people who work with our customers on a day-to-day basis. We've been able to hire really great customer success people who have really made a big difference. It's one of our big differentiators, I think, in the market is our customer success and customer support model. But that takes time. You've got to make sure you have the right processes when you get to this, this scale. You know, you go through step changes. And so that's what, one thing that we've been focusing on as a, a leadership team here at Kesbury is making sure that we don't lose that, you know, the special Kesbury experience that our, our, our customers had as we add more customers. So what we've done is we've done much more specialization. You go back to having vertical products. You then need to have vertical experiences for those customers. So that's been a big focus of ours is making sure we have specialization in in specific industries that allows us to get the scale that that you were describing. We go through the growing pains of of many organizations will at this stage. There's some really interesting studies of organizations that get, you know, over 100, 110 people and how that works. And that's been a big focus of the leadership team here at Kesbury is is making sure that we we maintain the excellent culture that we have, the, the focus on the customer and the excellence in, in the product delivery as we add more people in. Uh, we're always looking to hire engineers. You know, that's the, any um, Silicon Valley-based company. We're always looking to hire engineers and, and scale there. That's something that we, we continue to do, continue to focus on. But so far, we've been able to, to scale, and, and it's primarily due to that customer focus that's uh, allowed us to do that. Okay, so where else is Kespri looking? Another big area of, of growth over the next few months here is continuing to work with our John Deere partners. Uh, You may know, Randy, that we work with John Deere corporate and then with their dealers to deliver our aerial intelligence capabilities to the construction industry. And that's been a huge area of growth for us recently. We just released a couple of new capabilities there to support consuming existing design plans for sites, as well as dealing with things like um, AI-driven feature extraction. One of the interesting challenges you fly over a 60-acre earthwork site that's going to be a subdivision. You have to have a lot of trucks and a lot of equipment on that site. You don't want to actually include those in the calculations that you had for 
um, how much earthworks you need to do, you know, move 100 cubic feet of earth from one place to another. You don't want to include the big truck that's sitting on top of it in that calculation. So using AI to drive that is another thing that we actually are just about to bring to market here uh, in the next day or so. So another really exciting area for us is that kind of working with those John Deere dealers and with those construction companies. And I have to be honest, those customers are actually some of the most frequent flyers within the category users because of how embedded it actually is within their business. In your opinion, what makes Kespri successful? You never rest on your laurels in terms of being successful, and you've got to always pay attention to those things. And I think that's a hallmark of what we do is, is we're continuing to try and make sure that we understand what our customers are looking for. So, so customer focus is, is really an important part of it. The second focus is just focus in general. I think many organizations pivot and change what they're doing, and where we've come to, to realize and seen the most value is, is in really focusing on these vertical use cases and being clear about the value that we provide and to make sure that that's a consistent thing for us. So I think the focus term is a, is a really important part of that, whether it's on the customer side or just in terms of our, our business focus. And I think by doing that, we've been able to say, here's what we are specifically good at and going down the line of providing this kind of complete solution for use by you know, the in-house people within an organization, whether it's a surveyor, whether it's a uh, accountant, whether it's a adjuster. And that means that we were able to not get spread too thinly and not get confused in the market. So that we're very clear about what we're good at and we're clear about what we don't do as well. So focus is the, the thing I would say that's made the biggest difference. And customer focus specifically really has helped us to be successful. Okay, great. What were your perceptions of inner drone? First, it was really great to see you there, Rally. The thing that struck me is if you go back to our conversation earlier around the kind of splitting up of the commercial drone market into kind of pilot markets and or marketplaces and the kind of vertical specific solutions, what was noticeable to me about Interdrone was A, it was great to see so many people there and that, that community really still continues to thrive. However, it was really missing all of those other users that we've discussed. The consumers of the data were really missing from that. And I think that's something that we as an industry need to, to address is that we're providing forums for sharing of those types of best practices. There was a lot of really good content in Interdrone around how to build a business as a drone pilot, but very little in terms of best practices for using that data to drive decisions within a business using that data to plan how a mine is going to be evolved over time, or how do we improve the workflow to resolve a claim for a residential roof in a shorter amount of time and more effectively and give a better customer service. So I think that was the thing that was missing from Interdrone is that the more business user that we see is incredibly important to the future of the usage of drone technology, but also the value that drone technology actually provides. Along those lines, one of the things that I hear is that companies are keeping some of that information really close to their chest because they don't want competitors to gain a foothold in the market. Is that a valid point? That's an interesting question. I guess I have a a somewhat conflicting answer for you to that. So if you look at what we have been able to do in having our customers talk about what their usage is of our product, it's not been a challenge for us. You know, if I look back to just over the last two to three weeks here, maybe a month, you know, Wendling Quarries, one of our pulp and paper customers, Big River Steel, e-construction, all major enterprises you know, with incredible business value and their big, big businesses, all of them have been very happy to share their experiences and the value that they're getting from using this technology. Now, I'm really proud to say that they're test customers, but they're, they're okay talking about it as a concept and the value that they're getting. So that's the first thing I would say is that I don't think I've had as much challenges as maybe some other people have in the industry of getting those customers to tell their story and share that overall. And we've given them a forum to do that. Um, so we've actually invested in ways to enable them. So that's one thing. The flip side of that is I think in certain industries, it's a little bit more challenging if they are highly regulated. So I think the insurance industry is a good example of where there has been a lot more concern around uh, sharing information about what they're doing, not necessarily just because they want to keep it as a kind of a business secret, but more because they're in a highly regulated environment and the usage of drones is still relatively immature early, if you like. 
And so they've been careful about how they shared information about what they're doing and therefore have its impact on things like, you know, if a claim is declined using drone data, what impact does that have? So I think there's been a little bit more of a concern there over time, but we've seen, you know, Kesbury has been talked about by farmers insurance as a user. We recently had a video where State Farm showed their usage of Kesbury after a hailstorm in the Dallas region. So I think that's starting to change, but I, I, I think it's fair to say that that's a much more cautious industry. And I think that goes to the level of regulation around the industry is much higher. And I think that's where the reluctance has been. That makes sense. Let's shift gears a little. You've been with Kesbury for about a year. Were you in the drone industry prior? You know, I wasn't in the drone industry before joining Kesbury. As you said, I've, I've been here since almost exactly a year to the day, actually, that I joined Kesbury to run marketing. Before that, I was in an area which I actually think is incredibly related, especially in the context of the conversation that we've been talking about, which is in the data and analytics business. You know, my career going back most of the 20 years of my career has been focused on how people use, access, analyze, and share data to make business decisions. And I actually see the, the drone industry, the industrial drone industry, as ultimately a data business. It comes in a variety of formats. You know, it could be imagery showing damage to a rooftop. We're using the same types of techniques around, you know, using AI and machine learning to help make the decisions about those damage areas. The data around inventory management, how much stock do we have of a particular stone or in the case of, you know, big river steel in terms of the, the raw material that goes into making steel, that's a data challenge. And the drone ultimately is a vehicle for capturing that data. You know, it's a sensor that allows us to capture data. So it's very related to the drone industry. It's one of the things that really attracted me to, to Kesbury was that we've always thought about the core of this as industrial vertical applications, which are data driven. And that's the approach that we've taken. And that, that was really attractive to me you know, coming from that background and, and having solved those types of problems for customers in the past. Well, it seems like you're actually arriving on the scene at the right time since much of the conversation is about what do we do with all the data that we're collecting? Yeah, and I, th I think that's, that's a really good point. And I think, you know, you talked about scale. You know, it's not just about scaling the, um, the industry or the, the players, like the vendors in the industry like us. It's also about how the usage of that data starts to scale. Recently did a small announcement with SAP about how we can pull data into their construction applications. You know, those types of things where the enterprise usage of data is really what this is about now. There's still incredible innovation in, in how drones capture that data, you know, whether it's the you know, latest DJI Mavic Pro or us adding thermal uh, sensors onto our Kesbury drone. But ultimately, it comes down to how that data is going to be used. So, yeah, I, I think I timed it just about right for my skill set and my experience. Is there anything about the drone industry that you find more enjoyable or interesting than some of the other roles you've had? I talk about this with my team a lot, which is it's incredibly attractive to be in this industry because of the use cases that we have. Um, you know, going on site to visit a customer, you know, in some of my old areas might have been going to visit, you know, corporate headquarters, you know, wearing a suit, talking to people about the value that we could do. And that was incredibly important. And I got a lot of satisfaction out of that. But here, going on site means putting on steel toe cap boots, a safety hat and high visibility vest. And it's very real and concrete, you know, what we're actually doing, uh, like, excuse the pun of using concrete, but um, it's, it's real dirt and it's real rocks and it's real things, that, material that people are actually dealing with. And I, I find that incredibly attractive. And then the second thing that's attractive about it is the people that we work with on the customer side, people who are building things, who are creating things, who are helping people in times of need in terms of the insurance business. That makes it very attractive. What's hard about this business, I think, is that, the usage, even though you know we've got to the point where we have 150 to 200 mining companies using Kesbury, it's still early. And I think that there's still a lot of work to do in terms of establishing how that value propagates through a business, how people can standardize on sources of data. Because we're in the early market, there's a lot of churn still occurs, and that makes it hard to kind of scale. And that's also reflected in you know working with insurance companies who move slowly, want to be able to test things, need to embed it into their workflows that they have, that makes it a little bit harder to get there. But that also reflects why this is a satisfying job is, is to work with these industries and help them go down that path of comfort, satisfaction, and then you know, large-scale deployment. 
that's also very satisfying to go do. So I me and my team, we definitely relish the challenge that it presents as well as really enjoying working with the customers that we do. Based on your experience, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs trying to bring an idea to the market or trying to build their company? I focus my career on growing companies. Like how do I take something that's really got value and clarity and then scale it? But I think the thing that enabled me to come and do that here was that we really focused in on a, a couple of use cases that were really impactful to organizations. I think that to me is the key to success in any market, but particularly in the drone marketplace where you have a commoditized hardware platform in the form of DJI. You know, how do you innovate and really deliver value be above and beyond either on that platform or take the Kespri model of, of, of building your own platform? It really has to be focused on a particular pain area. Um, I think the, the companies that have really struggled have done one of two things. They tried to, you know, build platforms, which are expensive to do and really take a lot of effort to break out from the pack, especially in this industry where there's a number of platforms to work from. Um, and then the second one is, is that they've not maintained focus over time and they pivoted multiple, multiple times. Yeah, I think that's a, one of the cautionary tales from, from Airware's de demise is, you know, the need to be clear about what it is that you're doing. You know, you can learn and adjust, but um, having well, our president here at Kess we talked about is, you know, your true north of what, of what you're doing. And, and I think that's, that's the other piece of advice is, is learning quickly and adjusting, but, but really focusing on a particular use case or a particular value proposition that solves something that really matters to people in, in, in the real world. So going back to Airware, what can we learn from that experience? As I said before, what happened to Airware is really sad in terms of their employees and in terms of their customers. One of the things that we've actually done is reached out to a number of the folks that we know at those customers um, and uh, offered to help them out through their kind of end of month, end of quarter inventory work that they're, they've been doing. Airware shut down so quickly that if you're coming to do your end of September inventory measurement, you're not going to be able to do that with Airware. So uh, we've reached out to them. So it's really tough for those customers. So I, I definitely feel for those guys. In terms of what we can learn from it, I think it really goes back to focus. Um, you know, I've read a lot of the commentary, you know, everyone has a, a strong opinion about what happened there. And unfortunately, in the drone industry, there's a little tendency towards being happy when people fail in, in, in some of these cases. But for me, it, it really comes down to it wasn't about the fact that they had hardware um, as a big part of their early time. Kesper, we successfully have hundreds of drones that we produce that are flying in the field every day. So I don't think it was about hardware. And they had a, ultimately a pretty decent platform and some, some technology, especially through the Redbird acquisition that worked. But it ultimately, to me, it comes down to not having a key clear focus over time and the costs that are associated with that. I think there's a lot of money gets spent when you change and pivot that many times over, over the period that they were in existence. Um, and that kind of is reflected in, in, in going through that. We at Kespri have almost 50% less funding and we have significantly more revenue and customers than, than they, they have, I believe. And it's about that focus that we've really had over time. Um, you know, there's a lot of luck involved in these endeavors as, as you come from, you know, nothing to, to building a company. And, and it's always hard for it to go down. But I think focus is, is really the, the key to this. And, you know, I'm sure there may well be more drone companies out there that may kind of go down the airware route or get sold or, 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 or other things. Um, that's kind of an inevitable part of a growth market like this. But there's plenty of validity in the marketplace. There's lots of opportunity. The, the scope of industrial drone opportunity is, is, is enormous, even within the industries that we're just in today. But then we start to look out to energy and, uh, and other places. There's, there's so much opportunity and so much um, value to provide that this isn't a market problem. It was a, you know, a company execution problem. And for my final question, Paul, what message would you like to leave listeners about Kespri and the future of the drone industry? The real focus is, is for us to continue to provide the, the kind of application-specific usage and value that we, we've done up until now. What we're focused on is transforming the kind of industrial work environment. 
so enabling people to do the things that they need to do much more safely, much more accurately, and much quicker and efficiently. And so we're just going to continue to make sure we're focused on that and providing that value. When you get to the number of customers that we have, you really need to focus on how do we continue to give them value so that it'll come back every year. The joy of being a you know subscription product. And that's what we're really focused on is, is like making sure that we continue to deliver that value year over year and do that much more accurately, much more safely, and much more easily. That's it for episode 179 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Paul Ross of Kespri. I want to thank Paul for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about Kespri or want to connect with Paul, check out the webpage at kespri.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, please consider supporting the podcast with a small donation. The content is always free, but for as little as $1, you can help defray the cost of production. To donate, go to droneradioshow.com slash donate or patreon.com slash droneradioshow. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me, and I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Gores. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels.